Is it working? Is, is it working? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, um, welcome, everyone. My name is Dr. Ananya Chakraborty. I am the Abdul Hadi H. Tahir Professor in Comparative Religion at the American University of Cairo. I'm here today to present some of the work we've been doing uh, digitizing Indian Christian manuscripts and books. Um, this is a pilot project under the aegis oh. of the British Library's Invasion Archives Program. So the program begins with a recognition that I think is very close to all of our hearts, which is the global threat to archives. The UNESCO Memory of the World Program puts it like this. Um, documentary heritage reflects the diversity of languages, peoples, and cultures. It is the mirror of the world and its memory. But this memory is fragile. Every day, irreplaceable parts of this memory disappear forever. And I think for us, who do historical work in India, um, this rings very close to home. I mean, this is not just a question of the neglect and the poor conditions in the archives where documents are under threat of physical deterioration, but there are also political forces that I think are worth battling in keeping um, our um, histories alive. The Endangered Archives Program, so just to give you a little bit of information about it, uh, the British <coughs> Libraries Program that's funded by Arcadia, um, the program aims to preserve primarily through digitization but also through preservation techniques, archival material in danger of destruction or physical deterioration or neglect. The original archival material is always kept in the country of origin, so nothing will be removed from Goa. Um, in fact, nothing is removed from any of the owners of the collections that we're working with. Um, digitized <coughs> copies of the material under the conditions of our grant will be kept in the British Library and the Goa uh, State Central Library <coughs> and with owners of the material so that they also have a copy of this uh, digitized material for posterity. The users of the British Library and the Goa uh, Central Library can then access this material for non-commercial and hopefully scholarly purposes only. Um, the program is keen to enhance local capabilities for archival um, preservation and for um, digitization. And so therefore, all of the equipment that we've bought um, in order to do this project is going to stay in Goa and will hopefully be available for future use. So as more families or as more institutions come forward with collections, then we actually have the capacity to continue to do this work. And this is something that is very important because we're hoping that more people will come forward to add to this uh, collection. So the particular project, um, I began this because my own um, dissertation research is partly on Thomas Stephens, um, the great English Jesuit who, who is credited with, although it's clearly a co-authored <laughs> document, I believe, um, with the Christopher on. And when I was doing my archival research in Goa, it became very apparent that the archives I had access to were only a drop in the bucket for what was out there in terms of doing uh, history of, the, uh, of both Goa under the Portuguese and particularly of the Indian Catholic community that grew up here. Um, so, so when I finished my dissertation, one of the things I wanted to do was to give back to the archives and to Goa for all that I received in terms of doing my research. Um, so when I put the project together, I had really two uh, main goals. The first one was to identify and locate significant and difficult to access collections in Goa uh, in non-state hands. Um, the second was to digitize as much of those collections as time and money permitted. Um, this is a pilot project, so it was really supposed to be exploratory to see what was out there, and I think in that uh, sense, it's been a very, very successful endeavor. Um, so the project work, um, so how I went about doing this, uh, the person who really sort of helped me get the project rolling was uh, Reverend Father uh, Ivo Coelho, who has a blog that he's been running for some time, the Indian Christian Writing blog, 
And then I got in touch with him, and he put me in touch with my archival partner, Mr. Leonard Fernandez. Um, and then while I was in Goa, we, you know, uh, we contacted obviously the most significant research and academic institutions in Goa, like the Thomas Stevens Golden Kendra, the Xavier Center for Historical Research, seminaries like Pilar and Rachel, um, libraries like the Goa University Library, as well as the um, and then private collections in the hands of various families. Um, for uh, because I'm not, I, I don't want to overstep my boundaries. I'm not going to name the families um, whose collections we haven't digitized. But I, I will say this: that people were extraordinarily gracious and in letting me into their homes and talking to me about their family histories. The strange, uh, the stranger coming from Egypt. So I'm very, very grat grateful for the warm-hearted reception that I received in Goa. And um, to talk about the actual digitization work, I'm going to ask um, Mr. Leonard Fernandez to take the floor. Yeah. <laughs> as long as it might works. Uh, I'll just do this sitting down because. Uh, so the idea, of the, like Ananya mentioned, the idea was to digitize on location because we did not want to move material from where it was currently located to any other spot uh, for many reasons. One is because uh, to uh, minimize the damage that handling might uh, cause it and also because uh, these are valuable collections that we don't want to move from their places of uh, current locations. So uh, when we started, we started uh, uh, at uh, Zelia Center and uh, Thomas Stevens Company came to, primarily because they are very close by to each other. <coughs> at Zelia Center, it was books and uh, newspapers. At Thomas Stevens Company came, it was microfilms that we. Uh, and then we moved to Pilar, uh, uh, and we did we did the Krista Purana there, and we did some. Uh, palm lift manuscripts and some books there. And uh, in the meantime, we also met Mr. Norona, who had uh, handwritten notes by Father Gomish Katao, who we um, also digitized. Unfortunately, those papers are just a fraction of what was actually there, and which has been pilfered and uh, uh, unavailable to it. Um, uh, besides that, we, uh, we uh, cataloged the Rashal Seminary collection. And uh, the and uh, Gankaranjan dies, which is a small library in Margaon. For those of you who do not know, they had already got a catalog, and we digitized that so that people are at least aware of what we have. Uh, for digitization, uh, uh, we used overhead cameras to minimize the uh, minimize the handling of the book, so that we don't have to overturn the book on a scanner and things like that. But we had used book scanners where the books are in uh, pretty much good condition. Uh, we use, of course, other lighting equipment, PCs uh, and personal storage devices like hard disks and things like that. So the digitized process, uh, process works this way. We first scan the manuscripts in the raw format so that there is no loss in the image. And then we have moved it into TIFF format again because that's the most lossless format out there. And then they requested, like for example, XCHR has requested that they want their newspapers in PDF format. So in those cases, they are provided in PDF format. But those of you who know it, uh, there's lots of loss in PDF format. But it makes it most easy for you. These are all stored as digital files, both in the raw format and TIFF format. Uh, unfortunately, the raw format is a very, uh, very huge format. So you know, even in the TIFF format, one page is like 92 MB. So you can imagine uh, what kind of uh, space we're talking about. Uh, some of the material, this is not the full list, but some of the material that has uh, been digitized includes the Krista Purana manuscript from Pilar, the palm leaf manuscripts from the same place, the Anuarios, which were, you know, who was transferred there and all those kind of things. And then the Bulletin Ecclesiastico, which is a, a monthly bulletin that came out from the Archdiocese of Pilar. Then we have private papers of Thomas Chateau and uh, microfilms of manuscripts that have been housed at the Thomas Stevens. Some of the books are these. Again, this is not a full list. We have digitized close to 160 books. 
So this is not the full list, but these are some of the books. Oh, thank you. Uh, uh, just to give you an idea, these are both uh, uh, church publications as well as secular uh, private uh, publications. Uh, some of these. Uh, so this is the kind of thing that comes out of the Tiffin you know. So you have you have an image as it is. This is uh, one of the Krishna Puranas uh, pages from the Krishna Purana. Uh, uh, so we're not we are not interfering with the image right now. There is no cleaning and uh, making nice borders and nothing of that sort because we want to preserve the integrity of the manuscript as well. Uh, these are the palm leaf manuscripts again from the same place. Uh, and this is what a book looks after it's converted to tape image. This is how the book will look. So a PDF uh, will look similar. You know. uh, again, we are not touching. So that cracks on the paper and all are not uh, worked with. They are kept it as it is. So, uh, so Obviously, this is a project that has involved many, many, many people and, and a lot of help. So I just want to uh, make a few acknowledgments. Um, firstly, I'd like to thank the British Libraries and the Asian Archives Program for providing the funding for this project. Um, the Krishna Das Shama Goaset uh, Central Li Library and Mr. Carlos Fernandez in particular for allowing us to use this institution as our local um, institutional host. The Office of Sponsor Programs, um, Ms. Nima and Ms. Naveen Morsi at the American University in Cairo, who've been helping me, and Leonard knows them very well by email at this point. Um, Father um, Ivo Coelho and Mr. Rafael Villegas in particular for, um, for their guidance and sort of uh, helping me to meet people. Um, and Mr. Leonard Fernandez and Pritiksha and Moses, without whom none of this would have happened. So you know, thank you so much for all of your hard work. And then, of course, and this last but certainly not least, all of our most generous contributors, many of whom are here today, um, Father Costa, Father Alicia uh, Menezes, um, we could not have done this if people hadn't opened up their homes, opened up their repositories, you know, taken an interest in this project. And so we're really hoping that this will be something that becomes an ongoing and self-sustaining collection, something that Goans use and, um, and contribute to, and something that they feel is their own, and that this is something that they can go to for their own history. And, and I really want them to, I really want Goa to feel that this is theirs. <laughs> so that, 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 that was sort of the idea when I started this project. Thank you so much, and Leonard and I are happy to take any questions. Ananya, a whole lot of uh, projects which come up, no? Yes. Start off as good intentions, but die because of non-use, disuse, <coughs> lack of access. To my mind, the only things that work are those which are put out there in the public domain, which get life of their own. Yes. And there have been some amazing examples, both on the distribution side yes and on the access side yes so distribution you had professor michael hart who in the 70s recognized that we need to have an archive of everything mm -hmm. whatever's in the public domain creating access you have projects like the wikipedia and things like right, that right, right. so i think if you want this to be used if you want it to be recognized see because most people as you were saying we were just talking have this fear that if it goes out there i lose my control i use my i i lose my my uh, USP. Mm -hmm. Okay, people are not going to come to my institution if, if it's out there. Right. But I would appeal, you know, to everyone concerned to look beyond that, because the kind of uh, fallouts that come from sharing are, you know, things we cannot even conceive. Mm -hmm. Sir, I'm so glad that you put this mm -hmm. out there because this is, of course. Um, what I eventually want to do. So remember, this is a pilot project. I almost can't believe I got the money. I just finished my PhD. Yeah. So there were sort of uh, constraints on what I personally could do. Um, I have to go with the guidelines of the British Library. But that being said, the idea is that this will hopefully be just the foundation of something that becomes a much bigger and much more public um, repository. The idea, hopefully, at some point, will definitely will be that it really becomes part of the public sphere. What 
what I'm trying to do at this point with this is to simply lay a foundation. And then I'm hoping that this will become a self-sustaining enterprise where you know the, the Goan scholars, go people living here especially, can start to take ownership of the of the project. Remember, this is a pilot project, and so there is a possibility, uh, Leonard and I are discussing, of applying for a larger grant that would give us some more money and give us more possibilities to in, in terms of building this. But absolutely, I mean, my, my personal vision, hope, dream, whatever you want to call it, is that all of this eventually will be available publicly. But of course, there is a, there is a sort of barrier there to making people aware that they're not losing anything. If anything, they will gain something from more people having access to this kind of material. Part of the issue is, of course, political. There is fear, and absolutely justifiable and understandable fear, um, given the prevalence of the Hindu right wing in, in this country today. Um, that was also one of the reasons I wanted to do this project, to preserve other histories um, in the face of these kinds of just horrible assaults on both intellect and um, culture. Um, and so um, one of the things that you know we will have to work with is to you know make sure that our contributors feel that their patrimony, their legacy is safe. Um, and so that that's one of the issues is of course that in digitizing it and in putting it out in the public domain, it is actually safe. It's actually far safer than if it simply remains in one person's personal possession. I hope that answers your question. Yes, absolutely. It's a, it's a little contrary to what Frederick is asking. Yes. Frederick wants everything free, I will be open. Um, so you said it's available at the British lab and here, right? Is there nothing in between that you guys can do, like some other academic resources on that and stuff? Well, I mean, eventually what I would like to do, and so this is one of the things that I'm going to try to explore as a possibility, is to have the whole thing online so that anybody can access it. But for that, we basically need to find a, a, a participating library that would be willing to host it and to basically put it all of, um, online for perpetuity. Um, libraries like the University of Chicago Library, that, which has a lot of South Asian material online, that was where I did my PhD. You know, they do a, that's one of the models that I'm thinking with. So certainly the, the next step, I think, is to think with something like that. But again, we have to try carefully and make sure that none of our contributors' wishes are in any way trampled when, we, when we're doing this work. So we have to make sure that they are willing to do this before we can go ahead with that. And the second question for Leonard. So you mentioned you scan 160 books. Yes. Uh, is, is there, was there an effort made to catalog all the, all the scholar books in themselves? Uh, like no. I'm just looking at XCHR. Like for example, XCHR, yeah. they, they, they gave us these are the books you'll get to do. So they gave you just 160 books? No, no, they are give, they're giving us, but um, till, till date, this is what we've digitized. No, but I'm saying just the catalog itself, just the list of names. Your catalog, what you have done? What I have done? I don't know whether you, you've done anything. He has done 160. No, no, what no. the books that no, I have done. That's the 160. Yeah. Besides the 160, I think XCHR has got thousands of books. Yeah. So I don't. I, I, I've seen the room there. Really hmm. We don't have access to. You that. don't just look at the list. You know what's there. We, we don't have, have access to that. Then. No. We had a conversation with Father Gabriel years ago. In fact, I think Father Savio would be more uh, more inclined to share that with you. There are. I don't think it's out there. There are technical and other problems. See, all the catalogs within yeah. Goa are not accessible to each other. Mm -hmm. I'm, not, I'm not even sure they have a full catalog. I don't think they have one. I don't think. I'm not even sure. They probably have it, but it's not online. Well, because because the, idea, the impression that I got is, is they are cataloging, they were giving us books. Okay, this fits your criteria kind of thing. But I don't think they have a full catalog. No. But Father Manipur has a catalog for his seminary. Yeah, Rashal. Yeah, Rashal has a catalog. It's a, it's a more a listing than a catalog. Yeah. That's yeah. basically, at least you know what's there. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but we have not have put it online. Like, no. We will be, with the help of Leonard, we will But, but again, but again, it's there. So if you can call them and say, okay, yeah. you know, 
for scholars, at least that is there. Yeah. Is, there is it there in this library or not? So at, at least, least in a minimal way, it's least, searchable. Yeah, it's yeah. searchable in that way. Mm -hmm. Because if you know the author, if you know the name of the book, yeah. like he has done it on the Excel so yeah. program, yeah. and you just type it and you can... Is that an abstract rule along with the name of the book? No, just the name the, the, the author. See, you, 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 I don't know if this, this issue is uh, uh, in line with what we are discussing, but there's a huge talent issue in Goa, mm -hmm. you know. So, uh, there's a reason that I, I have only two people working with me, because I can't trust uh, somebody else with people's manuscripts <coughs> with people. So, yeah, there is, there is a trust issue, there is the technical expertise issue. And then there is a reading issue because most of these books are not in English. So how do you have even have And this 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 turned out to be a real issue. So even when I was doing, you know, when I was going around talking to people, you know, there's very few people left who can even read old Portuguese. Um, and you know, other scripts like Modi or Halat Amrada, we really are struggling to find, you know, people who can actually read these texts and then tell us what 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 they are. So our goal was to, you know not worry about that, just digitize it, at least have it, and then hopefully once we, if, you know, if we can find um, people like, one one thing is to perhaps approach the Bhandarkar Institute, um, where they would certainly have specialists who could at least work with the Indian languages. But there is a real issue of finding um, people who are qualified to read and, and yeah. seriously have the, the, the material we found. Yeah. And yeah. For example, uh, Right now, uh, XCHR is digitizing their Mamai documents, uh, digitizing and cataloging. And they couldn't find people to even read that Portuguese and put it into, you know, catalog those that much. It is, it's that bad. But because you also have to understand that the, the alphabets. Yeah, the orthography is an issue. Original, old Portuguese alphabets are different from today's Portuguese alphabets. For example, the F that is written is like S. And then there are also specialized scripts like the yeah. Banyan. So I mean, I can work on 16th, 17th century manuscripts, but even there, you know, the notarial documentation, which is in the Banyan, the, the scribal script, is very difficult to read if you don't have some kind of training. Just two or three comments, sir. Sorry, Father. Yeah, just I would like to congratulate you all for the work done. Thank you, Father. <laughs> even before I took over as the rector of the Rashal Seminary, we were trying to see how we could preserve the little that is left in our library of this old heritage. But it was becoming really difficult. We tried with a lot of people who could understand the language. Right. But then they would fall sick within a week or two because of the mites, because of the dust. They would get allergies. There's also lead. A lot of the old inks have lead. I got, I had real respiratory problems when I was doing my <laughs> research work. So if that's what uh, Mr. Norona was saying, if this is made public in some way, it would even help the others in their research. Because what we have said is this for scholarly work for non-commercial work, it would help very much. I hope so, Father. I hope so, and I hope, you know, with all of your goodwill that this is what will happen. Or at least give a copy for libraries that want it. Well, you know, I mean, once it's online, it's, yeah, it's infinitely online. replicable, you know. So, I mean, uh, for, uh, Mr. Fernandez will have a copy so people can approach it. Uh, so, you know, in that sense, it is replicable, yes. I wanted to ask whether there is any uh, effort done to document digitally the Gaunkarya records, Gaunkarya uh, accounts. Many things are there, but they are in uh, uh, Kandvi script, not not Konkani. Yes. And so, you know, so, so there are there are other resources to understand Goa. Absolutely, sir. So one of the really interesting manuscripts we digitized at Pilar Seminary is uh, Gaunkarya records. Um, and, and of course, there's a treasure trove of these kinds of community <coughs> records in the state archives. Now, the issue with working with the state archives is a whole other kettle of bureaucratic fish. So, 